Hey everybody, I'm Ken the Metal Professor, starting this video for the third time, so wish me luck. I'm the host of Mostly Metal. I broadcast this show on WVLP in Valparaiso, Indiana, you know, within four miles of our transmitter. You can hear us at 103.1 FM, but other than that, you're streaming on WVLP.org or even trying that TuneIn radio app where you can find WVLP. The show is called Mostly Metal because I mostly play heavy metal, but I do sneak in anything else that I feel like it at the time. That's the mostly part. And in fact, these videos I've been doing are going with that show because for months now I've been embedding top 10 lists of favorite bands in the show and I've been alternating metal and rock. Well, last week was Camelot, so this week is rock and roll and I'm going to be giving you my preference ranking and top 10 favorite songs of the Alan Parsons Project. Put an asterisk on that. I should just say I'm doing Alan Parsons because at least in my preference ranking I am going to include the the, the Alan Parsons albums in, as well as the Alan Parsons Project album. So there are five albums ever since the project released Gowdy. That was their last one. And Alan Parsons himself has released five albums since then. And I'm going to put those in the list because why not, right? I mean, it's all kind of the same thing. The top 10 list won't have that problem because there's nothing in there from the Alan Parsons solo era not by design it's just the way it played out there were a couple of them that were hanging in there you know at number 11 or 12 but they didn't quite make it so here's my order of preference for alan parsons albums when it's time to listen to alan parsons which one am i least to most likely to grab for listening and i'll start at the least likely end with time machine from 1999 this is an alan parsons project not the alan parsons project if you know what i mean the title track that opens the album is pretty fun out of the blue is a really nice mellow song other than that maybe press rewind but there's not a whole lot on this album that gets me interested and it's the one i'm least likely to listen to it was the third of the five post project alan parsons albums and along with that i will put a valid path from 2004 that's his second most recent Alan Parsons album. We play the game as a good tune. La Arc and Seal. Okay, it's French. I don't know. That's an, a really good instrumental. Chomolungma is another instrumental that's got some really, really throaty sound to it. But the problem with this album is that there's too many, okay, two or three, to me is still too many, you know, revisiting old tracks you know, updated versions of instrumentals that have already appeared on other Alan Parsons albums. Uh, it's kind of like Alan Parsons goes clubbing. It's a little bit more techno and upbeat, and there are some good tracks on it, but I'm just not finding myself that interested as I try it out. Uh, when I think about it, I should mention that this list could but doesn't include a record called Freudania, which is Alan Parsons, but it isn't. Uh, in a lot of places, you actually have to look it up as a cast recording of a stage production of some sort. I actually don't know the history of it, but it's very much Alan Parsons, but you're not going to find it listed as an Alan Parsons album, uh, but it's the same crew and apparently the same sound. I just, I don't know much about it other than it's there and it's very hard to find. Um, so it ain't in this list. Okay. My first Alan Parsons project album in this list at number 13 of 15 is Gaudi from 1987. Now, I like a lot of this. La Sagrada Familia that opens up the album. Standing on Higher Ground, Closer to Heaven, uh, Pasio de Gracia, the instrumental. These are all good songs. To me, by the time we got to Gaudi, the Alan Parsons sound was kind of getting a little old in the tooth um, and maybe not as, you know, not growing as much as I would have liked. And so I just, I don't find Gowdy as interesting as some of the other albums. Next up, The Secret, his most recent album from 2019. Now I was uh, really lucky. I never got to see Alan Parsons live ever, but I've loved Alan Parsons ever since I heard Turn of a Friendly Card back in 1980. And last year, I finally got to see him in Chicago. I sucked it up and I paid for that really expensive ticket because what the heck, it was probably, you know, a last chance to go see him. 
And I will admit there are a couple of times, you know, I had no idea what the set list was going to be. And he did do some, some nice dives into the Alan Parsons discography. And a couple of times, you know, I got a little misty eyed, you know, when they'd play something like old and wise or, uh, don't answer me when I wasn't expecting it. The album, the secret is pretty good. It's better than the two that came before it. I think uh, the highlight on this album is a song called Sometimes that Lou Graham sings vocals on. And if you haven't heard this song yet, you should go to YouTube or Spotify and check it out uh, because it's spectacular. Lou Graham sounds so good. But As Lights Fall is a good is a good tune. I can't get there from here. One Note Symphony is also a very, very interesting song because the vocalist sings in one note through the whole song. And it's it's actually pretty effective. Next up is Stereotomy from 1985. Now I'm mixed on this because when I bought the LP back in the day, I was in love with it because it came with like the plastic uh, outer liner that that you could slide the cardboard in and out of. You got 3D glasses to see through the red the, the red plastic and get this 3D effect off of the artwork. That was really awesome. Musically, eh, the title track is really good. That that was really like right there at 10.5 for my top 10 list. It's not going to be in my top 10 list, but it was probably the closest of all the songs that didn't quite didn't make it. Uh, in the real world is a good song. Where is the walrus? The instrumental off that album is fun. But all in all, you know, Stereotomy, Gaudi, they're the lowest project albums on my list. Uh, coming up after that, Vulture Culture from 1985. I mean, there are some very standout tracks. Let's talk about me, Days or Numbers, Somebody's Out There, The Same Old Sun. But all these songs put together, they kind of sound a little samey, sort of like the same mellowness, the same tempo. Uh, you know, okay, let's talk about me as a little more perky than the others. But all in all, it's, it's a very monotone album, and so I don't dig it as much as the rest. Okay, next from 1978. This one's tough for me. It's It's been up, it's been down. Uh, right now it's about in the middle of the list, and it's Pyramid from 1978. When I think about Pyramid... I usually think, eh, I don't know that I like listening to it that much. But then when I look at the track list, I'm like, I like that song. I like that song. I like that song. I like what goes up. The Eagle Will Rise Again. Uh, the instrumentals in the lap of the gods and hypergamma spaces. Shadow of a Lonely Man is a great mellow tune. One More River. So there's a lot of songs that I like individually, but for whatever reason, I, I can't get my head around the whole album, if that makes sense. And so... Uh, the the weirdness that's on the album, I think, outpaces some of the songs that have the more normalness, and maybe it's just a little more schizophrenic than his other albums. And so I don't I don't go back to it as much as others. Okay, next is On Air from 1996. This is an Alan Parsons album. Uh, Blown by the Wind is a great song. Brother Up in Heaven is a very very powerful. So Far Away and Blue Blue Sky are really uh, smooth songs. So it's one of these albums where I like it, yeah, like it, yeah, like it, yeah. So you know, I think there's 10 or 12 tracks on this thing, and I like about half of them very, very much. And then the other half are like, meh. Okay, uh, we're getting into the top six or seven here. From 1976, their debut, Tales of Mystery and Imagination. The first side of this album is great. The Raven, The Cask of Amontillado, The Dream Within a Dream, Dr. Tar and Professor Feather. I mean, that is a, I'm giving that away. That's going to be in my top 10 because what a great tune that is. This album and another one that's coming up in the list, to me, uh, they have second side problems where there's a little bit of uh, too much meandery stuff and just airy instrumentals and not good meaty songs on the second side. And I, I find that a little bit on this album. Uh, one of my favorite things about the Alan Parsons Project is the way that rock and roll transitions into a mix-up of rock and symphonic. Um, Tales of Mystery and Imagination, there's parts on the back side which you're just listening, you're, you're listening to an orchestra, and okay, that's fine, but I don't know that I like the back and forth as much. It doesn't blend as well, and so I, to me, it meanders a little bit more than it should. Um, so it doesn't get higher on the list, although the first side, <laughs> I love it. 
Eve from 1979 with probably my favorite instrumental track of Alan Parsons' project is Lucifer. The problem with that song is it's like five and a half minutes and it takes way too long to kind of roll in and get going. But once it does get going, it's awesome. You Lie Down With Dogs is a, a song with attitude. Damned If I Do is great, winding me up. Secret Garden is also a great instrumental. So to me, this song is pretty good from front to back. I don't like looking at the cover, though, with those ladies with the veils that make it look like they have leprosy on their faces or something weird. I guess that was the intent. Coming up here in my top five, this one's surprising when I compared it to other things, but I really do like it this much, is Try Anything Once, his first non-Parsons project album. This came out in 1993, and... It's awesome. Uh, Turn It Up, Break Away the Instrumental. Mr. Time is a great song. Siren Song is a good mellow track. Back Against the Wall uh, in O Life is almost like a it's almost like a gospel tune, even though it's it's not, but it's very uplifting. Um, so yeah, I just I really, really like that album, even compared to a lot of the Alan Parsons Project albums. Fourth from the top now. Here's the other one with the second side problems, and it's I, Robot from 1977. And again, the second side is the reason that this thing isn't higher up on the list. The opening title track, I, Robot, the instrumental, is awesome. I mean, everything on the first side, I wouldn't want to be like you, some other time, break down, don't let it show. I mean, that's a powerful song. When I was listening to that song in high school, it, that song really, really got to me and spoke to me quite a bit. And then back in the day, you'd pick it up and flip it over. And then just kind of meandering. There's only really one full honest-to-goodness song on the second side. And other than that, it's it's instrumental meandering. And they're, they're, it's good meandering. I mean, I like any one bit of it. But when it's all happening on one side of an album with no breaks, you know, and you've got very, very, you know, some short pieces in there, it just, it loses my attention. What can I say? Number three, Ammonia Avenue from 1984. And again, this this kind of surprised me. I would have thought that, that I'd put it a little bit lower, but when I listen to it and lay out the track list in front of myself, prime time, the opener, since the last goodbye, don't answer me, you don't believe. All these songs are awesome. The instrumental pipeline is great. The title track is, is pretty good. So this one was, these top three are in a battle. And this is almost like 1A, 1B, and 1C because it's hard to delineate which one is actually my favorite. I almost, you know, Ammonia Avenue is probably suffering just because it's not one of the classics. And so I kind of think, well, there's no way that could be number one, but <laughs> it might be, even though I have it here at number three. And at number two, Turn of a Friendly Card. It was the first Alan Parsons album I ever heard and the first one I ever owned. And from the time I put the stylus down on that album, maybe a price to pay, games people play, this opened up for me a whole other realm of rock and roll and music. Um, this one doesn't have second side problems. This one on side two, it does have meandering, noodly instrumental parts, but it ties in so much better with the rest of the music uh, that to me it's it's a much more cohesive single song on the second side, although I think that last track is a whole different thing. But uh, Oh, and Time, right? How can you forget about Time? That's a, a great tune, too. So that one right now is sitting at number two, but hit me on the head and I could change my mind to make it number one. Or Ammonia Avenue, I could make number one. But currently number one is the one that's left from 1982, Eye in the Sky. However, I will say that I do not want to hear Sirius ever again in my life. If you go to Spotify now, it doesn't just say Sirius, it says Sirius, parentheses, Chicago Bulls theme song. So there's some serious marketing. I'm happy for them that they're making so much money off of it, but keep it away from my face. Um, even the song Eye in the Sky, I guess I'm kind of tired of, but everything else, whew, uh, Mama Gamma, the instrumental, Silence and I, you're going to get your fingers burned, which is probably, okay, I'm going to use the word heavy. It's Alan Parsons. It's not really heavy, but it's one of the heaviest songs that they've done. Step by step, old and wise. Just good song after good song after good song. Really, really high quality. No interludes whatsoever. I mean, yes, there's instrumentals, but that doesn't mean they're interludes. It's just one good, meaty song after another. So that's it. Eye in the Sky coming in at number one. 
As a footnote to all of this, if you haven't heard of them, and I didn't until very recently, I actually was using the, uh, you know, fans also like version, uh, little doodle on Spotify where you can click up other recommendations in the same vein. I saw a band called Keats that has one album called Keats from 1984. This is the closest thing to the Alan Parsons Project that you're going to get without it actually being the Alan Parsons Project. But it basically is the Alan Parsons Project with an extra hump. Uh, Colin Blundstone, Ian Bernstein, David Patton, you know, some of the primary instrumentalists and vocalists uh, from the Alan Parsons Project in their history are on this album. It's produced by Alan Parsons. Stuart Elliott, who plays drums on the later Alan Parsons solo albums and, and I think some of the project albums too, he's on this album. And Peter Barden's from Camel playing keyboard so there's the there's the hump but yeah if you dig old alan parsons project albums and you haven't listened to this album keats go check it out because i think you'll like it a lot now i'm gonna tap pause and switch over to my top 10 alan parsons songs <laughs> All right. If you hear any strange sounds in the background, by the way, my wife and kids are upstairs. They decided to repaint the living room. And they've done the painting, and now they're doing the putting back together and ripping the strips of tape off of the walls. So if you hear thuds or cursing or anything like that, that is what's going on. My top ten favorite songs by the Alan Parsons Project. I, these are all going to be Alan Parsons Project songs, nothing from the solo albums. There were a couple of songs from the solo albums that flirted with this list, but none of them made it on. I didn't put them out deliberately. It's just the way that it happened. I decided to go back and also make a list of who the vocalists were, because as you know, there's various vocalists on Alan Parsons albums, although Lenny Zakatek is the one that shows up the most in this list. Also, Eric Wolfson. My number 10 song is Standing on Higher Ground off of Gowdy. It was nice to hear this song at that back end of the Alan Parsons discography again. It had been a while since I listened to Gowdy before I decided to start putting these lists together, and it was a lot of fun to go back and revisit it. The vocalist on this one is Jeff Baradale, but he's the closest thing you're going to get to Lenny Zakatek without actually having Lenny Zakatek. I was surprised when I looked it up and it wasn't Lenny because the vocals here, to, at least to me, to my untrained ear, sounded very similar to lots of the other songs. But I like this one. It's A lot of Alan Parsons songs are kind of motivational. and This one's nice and upbeat. Mm -hmm. Nothing Left to Lose off of Turn of a Friendly Card is my number nine. This is from 1980 and it was sung by Eric Wolfson. It's one of these songs that starts mellow, explodes into instrumental parts and symphonic stuff, and uh, is a good middle piece to that longer turn of a friendly card piece on the second side of that album. Number eight off of their debut, Tales of Mystery and Imagination from 1976, John Miles singing the system of, in parentheses, Dr. Tar and Professor Feather. This is a, a great tune that fits in that Edgar Allan Poe theme of that of that first album it's like a broadway song crossed with rock and roll it's a great story and it just it has attitude what can i say i really dig it at number seven i put old and wise off of eye in the sky sung by colin blundstone this is from 1982 uh, this is the song that when i it's always uh always meaningful to me i guess because when i was listening to this as a kid i would listen to this song over and over and it would make me think about what it's going to be life later in my years when i'm old and wise i guess or at least old and now that i'm pushing old and wise it's like wait that song's about me i mean again maybe not the wise part but it makes me really think about how much time has gone by since I heard this song the very first time and thought about the future, and now here it is. And uh, it's a whopper. And then it's always, it's a mellow tune, it's very powerful, and when it got performed, when I got to see Alan Parsons live last year, you know, maybe a little, maybe a little tear came out during, uh, during the chorus. Number six, One More River off of Pyramid. Here comes Lenny Zakatek for his first of several songs in the remainder of this list. Obviously my favorite song on Pyramid. There's no other songs off of that album in this list. 
another song with with attitude. It, it's more tempoed and upbeat than a lot of other songs from the Alan Parsons Project. At number five, Games People Play off of Turn of a Friendly Card, my favorite song off of that album ever since I heard it, and still one of my favorite songs, obviously, <laughs> by this band. It never gets old to me, and it really does, make, even more so than old and wise, it makes me uh, go back in my head into the, the nostalgia of having the vinyl and putting on the record and maybe even skipping past the opening track to this song because I liked it so much. At number four, I Wouldn't Want to Be Like You from iRobot, 1977, and here comes Lenny Zakatek on vocals again. This is the lead non-instrumental track. This album starts with iRobot, then it swings into this song. It did get radio play. You know, their songs are either sort of mellow and emotional, peppy and upbeat, or uh, upbeat, tempoed, and kind of <laughs> nasty, or, you know, calling somebody out about something. So like this one, I wouldn't want to be like you, uh, or you lie down with dogs off of Eve, right? Or, uh, you know... Okay, I can't really think of any other ones off the top of my head instantaneously, but uh, but yeah, this is a, a good snarky song. At number three, Don't Answer Me off of Ammonia Avenue, 1984, Eric Wolfson sings on this one. This is just a smooth tune. I just, I love the, the smooth guitar it, that goes in the background of this one. At number two... Sort of the epitome of Alan Parsons' songs, which start mellow, build, explode into orchestra and symphony, and have some drums and the you know a good beat for a while, then they slow back down again, like a almost like the end of a roller coaster. Uh, Silence and I off of Eye in the Sky from 1982, again with Eric Wolfson on vocals. This is seven and a half minutes of bliss if you like that kind of music. The slow part. The slow part isn't as good as the mellowness of Old and Wise, but when the slow part explodes into the symphonic part on this song, it's my favorite part of the album, and that album is my favorite Alan Parsons album, so it must, it must be good in my ears. And then at number one, the song I've always liked the best from Alan Parsons is Damned If I Do off of Eve, and 1979, our friend Lenny, Lenny Zakatek, is singing on this one. A good, a good keyboard riff runs through the background. All right, real quickly, let me just, uh, I'm going to run through a couple of sub lists here. Uh, you know, one of the things that Alan Parsons is famous for is putting instrumentals on his albums, multiple instrumentals on many of them. Here's my favorites. Secret Garden, I, Robot, The Ace of Swords, Hyper Gamma Spaces, and actually La Arc and Seal from A Valid Path. Now, that album was not high on my list. It was second to the bottom on my preference ranking. But that's a pretty darn good instrumental. It's It's got that AP Goes Techno sound to it that I described uh, earlier, and, and I really like it. Mellow tunes, which are all over the place. Other than, you know, Old and Wise already appearing in this list, uh, I'm going to say Time, Shadow of a Lonely Man, Since the Last Goodbye, The Same Old Sun, oh, that's good, Don't Let It Show, again, off of off of iRobot, that, that one hit me when I was in high school, um, and sometimes the song off of the most recent album, The Secret, sung by Lou Graham, again, if you haven't heard that, go listen, because it's going to give you goosebumps. And then honorable mentions that didn't quite make the top 10, The Raven off of Tales of Mystery and Imagination, Days or Numbers off of Vulture Culture, You're Gonna Get Your Fingers Burned off of Eye in the Sky, and Stereotomy, the title track off of that one. Those are the ones that were kind of hovering up there between 10 and 11, but didn't quite make the list. I've done, I don't know, 15 or 20 of these lists at this point in 2020 and this could very well have been my favorite one to do because it just let me go back and re-experience this nostalgia from one of the bands that I have listened to constantly since I was in high school but perhaps more recently just you know I haven't gone back to them as much as I should and so this gave me that excuse and it was great. So I hope you liked a little bit of it too. Next week, I'm going to return to the heavier side of things, and I'll give you my uh, preference ranking and top 10 favorite songs for the hard rock, 
light metal band Nightingale, fronted by Dan Swano. So again, if you want to listen to these songs, well, I mean, I don't have to tell you how to find them, but if you want to see them all curated all together, go to metalprofessor.com. You'll find links to the videos. Uh, tune in to WVLP through WVLP.org this Wednesday night, July 22nd uh, at 10 p.m. U.S. Central. And then the following Sunday at 8 p.m. U.S. Central, the second half of the two-hour show will contain these songs. But you know how to use the computer, so I really don't need to tell you that 